the Gibbs free energy has two contributions, uh, as you can see here. One is the enthalpy, and one is the entropy here, uh, where you have to remember you have a minus in front and multiply by the temperature. So this allows you to understand the equilibrium constant in terms of enthalpy and entropy. For example, uh, here you have an equilibrium between uh, two covalently bonded hydrogen atoms in H2 and two free H atoms. And as you can see, the equilibrium lies very much to the left. So the, there's only a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction uh, of H2 molecules that are dissociated at 25 degrees uh, Celsius. And so one can understand that by looking at the enthalpy and entropy contributions to the free energy. Right? So you can see the standard free energy change is almost the same as the enthalpy change. So in this case, the entropy change uh, or the entropy contribution to the free energy is much smaller than the enthalpy change. So we say that this uh, process is enthalpy-driven at 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, and that's why the equilibrium lies so far towards uh, reactants, because the enthalpy of the reactants is much, much uh, lower. Okay. If you look at the hydrogen bond, on the other hand, at 25 degrees, we see that the equilibrium lies towards the products, or towards separated water molecules. And so we can, again, we can understand that by looking at the enthalpy and entropy contributions to the standard free energy change. So in this case, the enthalpy is much smaller. The enthalpy change is much smaller than for H2. This bond is, the hydrogen bond is weaker than a covalent bond. Whereas the entropy contribution to the free energy is roughly the same. In this case, this term is larger, the entropy term is larger than the enthalpy term. And as a result, the standard free energy change is negative, meaning that the equilibrium lies towards the product. So in this case, we would say that the, this process is entropy driven at 25 degrees Celsius. So the key equation here, again, is this, the free energy change, the standard free energy change, written in terms of enthalpy and entropy contributions. And this allows us to understand the equilibrium constant. OK, so here I'm going to show a process where a ligand molecule comes in and binds to a protein. And so as you watch this video, you should decide whether you think this process is enthalpy or entropy driven. If you need more time, press the pause button, or if you want to see it again, rewind a little to see the video. Otherwise, uh, I'll show the answer here in just a second. Ready? Okay, so this process is most likely enthalpy driven. And you can actually argue this without knowing the exact values for delta H standard and delta S standard. 
here's the thought process. So the process is spontaneous. You can see that the ligand binds the protein spontaneously. So the products are favored over the reactant, so that means the standard free energy change must be negative. So why is it negative? Well, bonds are formed, hydrogen bonds are formed in this case, so the enthalpy change will be negative, and that will contribute to a negative, all th other things being equal, that will contribute to a negative standard free energy change. Uh, the bond formation means less freedom to move. You go from two particles to one particle, so the ent entropy will also decrease. But a negative standard entropy change will lead to a positive standard free energy change because you're multiplying it by minus t. So if delta H was zero, for example, then delta G here, delta G standard would be positive. So this will make the standard free energy positive. This will make it negative. We know it's negative. So this has to be larger than t times this. And so therefore, the, the process is enthalpy-driven.